Stoichiometric calculation or stoichiometry notes for second year chemistry, example five. In this example, we're going to write a balanced chemical equation as we would with almost anything in chemistry. It says tin comes in contact with oxygen. Tin is SN plus oxygen. And it tells us it forms tin 4 oxide and already gives us the formula, so SNO2. We have to go back here and consider tin is diatomic, no, so tin is just SN. Oxygen is diatomic, so we get a 2. We need to balance it. It's already balanced. Okay, so I know you don't need to tell me this, but I'm going to indicate to myself that it's been balanced. And now I'm going to begin the problem. Now it says, assuming all the tin was reacted, what is the mass of the oxidized tin? So this is my oxidized, oxygen oxidized tin, foil. Now it says all of the tin was reacted. Depending on what order we're doing problems in this year, you may have already learned about limiting reactants and excess, excess reactants, or you may not have. Whichever reactant is used up first or used up is my limiting reactant. So this is my limiting reactant, and this is my excess reactant. Every problem in chemistry must begin with the least amount of stuff you would produce, or the limiting reactant. So assuming that tin is reacted, all the tin is reacted, tin is my excess reactant, so I must start with tin. Let's see if we know anything about tin. As I read this, I see a density of tin. We will not start any problem with a density. Normally, pardon me, normally in, in stoichiometry, you will start with a mass, a mole, or a volume. So we have a density. We will not use a density as a starting point. We almost always will use a mass, a mole, or a volume to start. So now I have three numbers. And remember, if I have three numbers, the length, width, and height, I'm assuming, I can get a volume. So we have to figure out the volume. The volume is equal to length times width times height. Now in this problem, we need to be very careful because this is how they make chemistry difficult. This is a problem right out of a textbook we either are using or have used in the past. And this is not in the same unit. So I've got to convert this into centimeters, right? So I'm going to move my decimal to get it into centimeters or do my conversion grid. And I would see that this would be the actual value of this in centimeters. Okay, because there's a there's um, 10 millimeters in a centimeter. So I have to move my decimal place. So to get the volume, we're going to take the 9.34 times, that's a 4, times the 45.6 times 0 0.543. So when I do that, I'm going to do that on my calculator here real quick. 9.34 times 45.6 times 0. 0.0. This should be 0. 0.0. Let me make that correction here. This should be 0, because I need them all to be centimeters, 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 and centimeters. Okay, 0. 0.0543. I get a volume of 23. 23.13 or 23.1 um, centimeters cubed, pardon me. And I'm doing sig figs, which we may or may not have learned sig figs this year. It depends on the year. Uh, with COVID that year, we did not. So uh, this has three sig figs. This has three sig figs. This has three sig figs. So my answer can only have three sig figs. So 23.1 centimeters cubed of 10. So that's what our starting point amount is. Remember I said you can start any stoichiometric calculation with a mass, volume, or mole. We have a volume. So we're going to start with 23.1 centimeters cubed of 10. Okay, and we're going to go to our ending point, to the oxidized tin, in this case tin oxide. So we're going to get rid of centimeters cubed of tin. Now centimeters cubed is a volume. Remember that density possesses the volume. Okay, if we have a density, we have a mass and a volume. I want you to remember that technically this volume, pardon me, this density is going to be written really like this. Okay, because remember that the slash tells us there's a one slash. This unit is underneath, so I put underneath. So if, to have, if you have a unit, then a slash, then another unit, the unit after the slash is underneath with a one like this. So we know for every one centimeter cubed of tin, its density tells us there's 2.8 grams of tin. So I got that from the density, 7.28 grams. The 7.28 grams goes on top. I slash it, which is the same thing as thinking about drawing the line underneath of it, and then putting one centimeter cubed. So now we know that centimeters cubed of tin have canceled. 
I've got grams, so I can use the periodic table to go from grams of tin to one mole of tin, because the periodic table tells me the value of any mass for any element or compound. I just have to calculate it. So I'm looking up tin. I'm going to find SN, and I have 118.71 grams. So I'm going to put 118.71 grams for every one mole. So now I have moles on top, so I can mole mole shuffle. I know for my balanced equation, one mole of tin equals one mole of tin oxide. And then from this, I'm going to go ahead and erase this piece just to keep this clean. So you can see this calculation is going to go away now. You'll have to rewind if you need to review that. So getting rid of that just so it's out of my way. Going back to my pen. Okay. So then I would say for every one mole of tin oxide, there are so many grams, I've got to calculate that off the periodic table. So I'm going to take 118.71 plus 16 for one oxygen plus 16 for another oxygen gives me 150.71 grams of tin oxide. And I'm going to do all that math. What I'm going to do on my calculator is 23. 0.1 times 7.28 times 150.71 1 hit equals, divide by 118.71 1 hit equals, and then I come up with 214. I can only have three sig figs, grams of tin oxide. I know that some of you have not learned about sig figs yet, depending on the year. Don't worry about that. Um, I will make sure that I can take care of all possible answers, or I'll specify how many decimal places I want you to have. So the answer is 214 grams of zinc oxide. I just said zinc, sorry, tin oxide. Okay, so let's talk about what we did. We already established a limiting reactant because of the way the problem was written. We knew that our limiting reactant was tin because it said it's all used up. So if it's all used up, it has to be my limiting reactant the way this is worded. I knew I was going to tin oxide, so I started with a mass, volume, or a mole. In this case, I did not have a mass of tin, but I could calculate a volume of tin, being careful to make sure that when I multiply three numbers to make a volume that they are all in the same unit, if not convert them all to the same unit. I did that. That's how I got the 23.1 centimeters cubed. So now I have a volume to start. I allowed the density to get me from volume to mass. Now, we haven't talked about this yet, but let me emphasize that density is our pathway between mass and volume. Density is the pathway between mass and volume. If I have one, I can get the other if I have its density. If I have grams, I can get to centimeters cubed. If I have the density, if I have centimeters cubed, I can get to mass if I have the density. So that's what we did here, keeping in mind that 7.28 grams slash centimeters cubed. I'm going to put the one centimeter cubed on the bottom, the 728 grams on top. The slash kind of tells us that this is underneath. Then I can use the periodic table to get from grams to moles of tin. Then I can mole mole shuffle. Remember, these numbers here come from my balanced equation, one tin and one tin oxide. And then I can use the molar mass of tin oxide calculating to get 214. Okay, so here is a written out version of it with a little bit more understanding. Here's the final answer if you want to see a type version. Okay, next example, 5B. On 5B, it says air is 21% oxygen by mass. It tells us the density of air and temperature and pressure. This part we really don't care about, the temperature and pressure part. How many grams of air are required to completely react with the tin foil? So basically, how much is going to react with the tin foil, okay, to make it completely used up? Okay, so we're going to then start with our next piece. So we're going to start with a mass, a volume, or a mole. Do I have a mass, a volume, or a mole? Not presently here, but I do have a volume right here. So this is connected because it's 5A and 5B. We're assuming because it didn't tell us otherwise that we still have the same size piece of foil. So we're going to start with our 23.1 grams, pardon me, centimeters cubed of tin. 23.1 centimeters cubed of tin. That's what we calculated by figuring out length times width times height. Now that we know our starting point, starting point, we need to deal with this percentage. Nowhere do I see in this problem percentage yield. So therefore, if I have a percent, I need to think about is it a percent that's part over whole or a percentage yield. I don't see the word percentage yield in here, so I'm going to assume this is a part over whole. So if it is a part over whole problem, I gotta figure out what my part and what my whole is. Your whole is always gonna be 100 grams 
and your part is always also going to be grams for purposes of our course. So we have a, so because we got part over whole, right? When we do a percent, our whole is 100. 100% 100 of your grain, what is it? You earned a 93, so you're at 93 points out of 100, okay? So 21 grams is going to go here. 21.0 grams or 21 grams of here. Now we need to figure out what labels go with the part and the whole. The whole. So what is this a part? What's the part? Air is about 21% oxygen, so this is oxygen. And it's that's how much there is in air. So our part is oxygen, our whole is air. So oxygen is part of air. Our part, oxygen, air, or whole. Think about that. Air has other things in it besides oxygen. So I took the 21 over 100, and think about if you take 21 divided by 100, you get 21%. So that's my part over whole. So you could have thought of this right away. As soon as you see the percent, you can consider whether it's an actual over theoretical. Don't see the word percent yield anywhere, or so therefore it's not an actual over theoretical, so it must be a part over whole percent. So I did my part over my whole, and I have grams of oxygen, grams of air. Now we are trying to get to grams of air, so we have to get to air but to get to air, we have to get to oxygen first. This is the relationship we've established between oxygen and air. So I've got to get to grams of air, but in order to do that, I've got to get to oxygen. So we've got to get out of tin and into oxygen so that we can get to air. So we're going to start with our given. Remember I said a moment ago, we're going to start every stoichiometric calculation with a mass, a volume, or a mole. So we're going to start with our volume, 21.3 grams of tin. We're going to use the density, 1 centimeter cubed of tin, right, from the previous problem, for every 7.28 grams of tin, this is, the, this is the density of tin, which allows us to get rid of centimeters cubed of tin and get to grams. Then I can use the periodic table to go from grams of tin to moles of tin, periodic table number. Then I can use the momal shuffle. Use the momal shuffle next. Apologize, I thought I had more of this written out. So now we went from one mole of tin to one mole of oxygen. Where do I get these two numbers from? I get them from my balanced equation. One mole of tin, one mole of, of oxygen. Then I can use the periodic table to go from moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. Why is it 32? Because there's two oxygens. And this is the new piece. Remember that we had, a moment ago on our screen, we had 21.0 grams of oxygen for every 100 grams of air. That was the relationship we established between the part over the whole. So I can write this relationship in any way that I need. Once I establish it, it can be flipped. Because I have grams of O2 here, I got to have grams of O2 down there to cancel. So I have to flip this and put 21 grams of O2 for every 100 grams of air. Or for every 100 grams of air, there are 21 grams of O2. I can write this ratio just like I could say 12 inches equals one foot or for every one foot, one foot, there are 12 inches. Okay, so that's the same thing. I can write a ratio either way I need it. So notice what happened here. First, we started with our volume. We use the density of the tin to go from volume to mass. Use the periodic table to go from mass to moles. Use the momal shuffle to go from tin to oxygen. Use the more mass of oxygen to go from moles to grams. And then to get from oxygen to air, we had to use our relationship that we established between mass and air. Between, sorry, mass of oxygen and mass of air. This is our uh, percent relationship, our part over our whole. When I do all that math, you'll get 216 grams of air with three sig figs. The reason you need three sig figs is this is the smallest number of sig figs. We don't count these ones, and that's why. Again, in your homework or in your practice, I'll be looking for decimal places. Let's look at part the next part.